Oh, I just start recording and sure enough. So plan today, work through some examples. I'll take questions from the review. I will be doing, I will be around after school on Monday. I'm not going to be doing like a formal, formal tutorial. It's going to be, hey, I'm around. Come on in if you have questions, okay? And the reason is you guys are actually a couple of days ahead of my other blocks. If I did a tutorial Monday after school, my other blocks, uh, one of my blocks is going to be doing Torx, uh, the, la the latter question on Monday. So I wouldn't really have finished the unit. They would have just seen it all. Okay. A uniform 15 kilogram pipe of length blah 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 has 160 newtons of force applied four meters from its lower end as shown. Using the point where the pipe touches the ground as a pivot, calculate the sum of the torques acting on the pipe. So I'm looking at this one, Justin. I don't think this one is in equilibrium. I think what it's telling me is it's moving. Figure out what direction and what's the torque. So I'm still going to start out by saying perpendicular components. I'm going to list all of my torques, I think. But this time, I, I don't think we're going to get equal. Okay, a little bit of a twist here. Uh, what are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Okay, so there's going to be the center of mass right here. And it's... Is the screen frozen? I'm sorry. There we go. Let's try that. I could have sworn I hit that button. Thank you. Uh, there's going to be the center of mass right here. And, uh, yeah, looking at my answers, I'm sure there's an unbalanced torque because they're saying, what is the sum of the torques? And it's not zero. Uh, Mg. And then we have tension. I think for this one, what I'll do is I'll calculate. Oh, there's more forces, but I think the rest are right there. And since this isn't a written question, I'm not going to freak out about getting the free body diagram right. It's multiple choice. I want to cut corners, be in a bit of a rush. What I'm going to do is I'll figure out the uh, clockwise <laughs> torque from this. I'll figure out the counterclockwise torque from this. And I think I'll go bigger minus smaller is the remaining difference, what's left over. Because I think clockwise and counterclockwise, you can kind of think of them as opposites, as positive and negative numbers like we've done with other forces. But in this case, it's torques. Uh, we have to go components. Mg perpendicular and tension perpendicular. Angles, 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 angles. Uh, zoom, zoom. Oh, there's a Z. So this right here is 42 degrees. Can you see that okay? No, nope. I'm writing on top of the number. That doesn't help you guys at all. This right here is 42 degrees. And, okay, the trick here for this 34... Imagine this going straight down, 90 degrees right there. 34 there, so these two add to 90. Uh, 56, and these two add to 90. Uh, you know, the 34 ends up there. And you probably noticed that when you have something on an angle, the bottom angle ends up in the triangle right there. You may have spotted that, but I still walk through it because there's all sorts of weird diagrams out there. Remember the one we did on the take-home quiz yesterday? Number three had the tension going in kind of a weird direction. That was a tough one. Um, so I'm going to say this. The torques clockwise in that direction equal mg perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. How far? Oh, pipe is 5 meters long, 2.5. And you'll notice again here, Dylan, here I didn't go sum the torques clockwise equals sum the torques counterclockwise because I looked at my answers and I said, oh, they're telling me my net torque is not zero. It's not balanced. So I'm going to find each one, bigger minus smaller. Uh, which trig function relates mg perpendicular and mg? You've probably noticed most of the time when you're dealing with gravity, it ends up being cosine. 
Uh, the only time it wouldn't is if they didn't give you that angle, if they gave you a different weird angle somewhere else, and it could happen. So I haven't said to you, memorize gravity as cosine, but it's been cosine almost all the time. So I think this ends up being m g cosine of 34 times 2.5. The clockwise torques ends up being math 12s. Make sure you're in degrees. Am I in degrees? I am. The clockwise torques ends up being m 15 times g 9.8 times cos 34 times 2.5. And I get 304.67. What are the units for torque? But it can't be Newtons. Newtons is force. This is not force. Torque is what times what? Force times perpendicular distance. It is Newton meters. But that's not joules like it used to be. Um. Oh, uh, let's do uh, counterclockwise torques. I'll do that over here. So the torques counterclockwise, which is in that direction, I'm pretty sure that's tension perpendicular times... How far is it from the pivot? You have to do a bit of arithmetic. Brennan? Yeah, four. Uh, how are tension perpendicular and F related? And I think you've noticed that most of the time, not always, but most of the time for tension, which trig function has it been? Usually. So this one ends up being tension sine of 42 times 4. The torques counterclockwise ends up being tension 160 sine 42 times 4. And I get 428.24. <coughs> Excuse me. Big sneeze online. Uh, again, Newton meters. Which one's bigger? Because these aren't balanced this time. Which one's bigger? Pat? Uh, wrong, wrong. Right? Uh, yeah, Gord said it's C. I hope you didn't actually pull out your calculator. Hopefully you glanced at the answers and said, oh yeah, about 120, as opposed to actually crunching the numbers. So, C. So there is an example of a... Can I call that a curveball? Not exactly, but Kellen, I, although I think there is one like that somewhere in your review, now that I think about it, I think there was one where it simply said, find the, find the net torque, and it wasn't zero. But hopefully you're getting comfortable now with components and beams at angles. Okay. Turn the page. A student stands on a uniform 25 kilogram beam. Oh, another late person. I have to pause my lesson. So we've seen diagrams like this before. Clearly a beam, two things on the end and a mass in the middle. The only twist here is instead of saying find the force on the left or the force on the right or both of them, say find the mass of the student. Okay. Thankfully, it's a horizontal beam that makes things way easier because when it comes to gravity, that's going to mean no components. It's going to be perpendicular. So we're going to start out. I, I'm going to assume this beam is in equilibrium. they got a woman standing on there. Let's assume if it was spinning, she wouldn't be standing on there. What are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Gravity where? Okay, and that's the mass of the beam. I'll call that mass of the beam times g. What else? Mass of the student, m s times g. What else? 
okay, this it's telling me the scale is feeling the beam pushing down at 350 newtons. Now, we're not drawing the force on the scale, but if the beam is pushing down at 350 newtons, force is coming what? So there must be an upwards force right there of 350 newtons. And I could call it normal force, but since it gave me a number, I'll just put the number there, one less variable to deal with, if that's okay, Evan. And uh, there's also, I'm sure, a force up right here. And that's a problem because there's two things I don't know, the mass of the student and this force, or it would be if I tried solving this using forces by saying everything up equals everything down. But with torques, of course, Evan, I'll put my pivot right there, gets rid of one unknown force. Is that okay? Good. Try this on your own. I'll freeze my screen. See if you can figure out, as a little twist, the, what the mass of the student has to be. No components, but it's going to be the sum of all torques clockwise equals sum of all torques counterclockwise. When you're done, let's look up. You can look up. I'll unfreeze my screen every so often. We're just trying the second question on our own, and then I'll unfreeze my screen, see if you can get it. What was the mass of the beam? 25? Thank you. See if you get what I got. Good. Oh, have I gone on a rant about the calculator errors that drive me crazy in this unit? By the way, I find, Justin, in all honesty, the top of the fraction is always complicated enough that you may have noticed I used to always just put everything on the top in brackets, everything on the bottom in brackets. More and more when I'm typing on my calculator in this unit, I do the whole top and I press equals. And then I just divide by the bottom. I, it, I, I found it was too many brackets to consistently easily keep track of. And because you're almost always only dividing by one thing, or at the most, in this case, two things, I figured, eh, I'm not going to worry about brackets so much. I'll just type in the whole top, enter and then divide by whatever's on the bottom. Enter. It's 
So I did that here. I did the top line, got 682, and then I divided by 9.8 times 1.2. Uh, 50, 58? Yeah. Okay. I probably, if I was in a rush, would have crossed out D anyways, because 89 kilograms, that's a pretty heavy student person. And that's a football player weight, so. Okay. Message for this question, Kellen, is on your test, I won't always say find the tension or find the force. I may say, hey, find the mass. That's uh, find the mass of the beam would be an interesting one, okay? Or uh, find the weight of the beam, which would be mg of the beam. That would be an interesting one. But I don't always just have to divine tension. Turn the page. I like number three. I like number three. I like number three. I like number three. Number three is a nice question. I like number three. This is about as tough as I can ask you, I think. It says this. A 6-meter uniform beam of mass, 32 kilograms, is suspended horizontally by a hinged end and a cable. A 93-kilogram object is connected to one end of the beam, and it wants me to find the force on the hinge. Now, the real answer here is I can't find the force on the hinge directly. I think what I'll try and find is its horizontal component, its vertical component. I'll add those together tip to tail and I'll find a resultant, but to do that, I have to do a lot of torques. And you can see seven marks. This actually was from a provincial. I think this was from the 2001 <laughs> provincial, I think. So this is also considered fair game. Now, it was one of the tough questions that year, so there were other easier written questions as well. I think the written question on energy was a straight roller coaster heat question, which was almost plug and chug. So, okay. Um, hmm. Suggestions? Pat? I have no idea what you're saying. I think I'm going to put the pivot right there. I agree. And then what? Let's label our forces. Okay. The beam has mass. By the way, every once in a while, to make the question easier, they'll say the mass of the beam is negligible. They'll go to our magic physics world and give you a massless beam to give you one less torque to deal with. I've seen that happen. I don't think I did that on the test, but in case. Uh, and that's going to go center of mass right about you know, mass of the beam times G. What other forces? Tension, like the feeling you get when you haven't done all the homework. Next. What else? You're missing an obvious one. Oh, sorry, yeah? Okay, yeah, I got this one. Uh, I'll call it mass of the load times G. Or you call it MO for object, whatever. Just some way that you can keep them straight in your equation, right? That can't be it. Why can't that be it? Which way is tension pulling? What two directions? Up, I'm okay with, because up could possibly cancel out those guys. But what, Megan? Also to the... Okay, it's pulling to the left. There has to be a force to the right right there. And I've called that usually Fx for horizontal. And I'm almost positive, Jordan, that there's also a vertical component right there. I'm pretty sure when you hang something that, yeah, the tension's carrying most of the mass, but... Right here, it's taking care of some of gravity, too. How far are both of these from the pivot? Zero, so they're not going to give me any torque. i got to do one more thing before I can start. I like this. I like this. Yeah. What am I going to have to do with tension? Components. Perpendicular. And parallel. And this time, tension parallel is going to become important. You know why? Gordon, it's equal to Fx. In fact, I can't find Fx. Can't. But I can find tension par uh, parallel. And, and as 
say they're equal. In fact, I'm not going to find tension at all. I'm going to find perpendicular, which is going to help me find Fy. I'm going to find parallel, which is going to help me find Fx. Tension itself in this question, not useful, because it's at an angle, and everything else is componentized, if that's a word. So let's see. The sum of all the torques clockwise equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise. And I'll continue down here. Uh, clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. Oh, these two. The mass of the beam times G times its distance from the pivot. Now, before we go further, look up, everyone. The only reason it's 3 is because the pivot is at the end. What if the pivot was right there? I'm just making that up. What would the distance be? The reason I'm saying that is there is somewhere on your test going to be one where I don't put the pivot at the end. And one of the most common mistakes, kids just look at the length of the beam. Oh, uh, distance is 4 if it's 8 meters long. Or it's a 10 meter long beam. Distance is 5. Well, only if the pivot was right at the end. And it's not. It's just to the right of the center, as a matter, or just to the left of the center. So just make sure you think. Uh, but this one is definitely going to be 3. And then we have mass of the load times g times its distance from the pivot, which is definitely 6 because it's end to end. And that equals tension perpendicular times how far is it from the pivot? You know what I'm going to do? Since I want to find tension perpendicular, I'm going to divide by 4 on this line. I almost never do that, but I'm scared I'm going to run out of room here. Okay. In fact, I can almost go to my calculator now because I know mass of the beam and I know mass of the load. So why not? Of course, as soon as I open my calculator, I cover up the data. 32 and 93. Okay. 32 times 9.8 times 3 and... 93 times 9.8 times 6. And Justin, like I said, what I've often started doing because they're long, yucky fractions, I just hit equals, divide by 4. And my right is tension perpendicular 1602.3. Someone else get that too? Okay, and I'm not going to round off because this is not final answer. 1602.3, and this is tension, so newtons, it's a force. You see, I can now find Fy. This vertical up plus this vertical up has to equal what? The two downs. Let's write that down. I'm going to write a little Fy colon here just to say, here's where I started to solve for Fy. So when I look at my work later on, Jordan, I know what the heck I did. And we said this. Tension perpendicular up plus mystery force Fy equals the mass of the beam times G plus the mass of the load times G. That means that Fy is going to be mass of the beam times G plus mass of the load times G minus 1602.3. Mass of the beam, 32 times 9.8. Plus, mass of the load, 93 times 9.8, minus my last answer, which is conveniently stored on my calculator. Whoa, did I do this wrong? Thirty-two times nine point eight plus ninety-three times nine point eight minus answer. Did I do something wrong here? Now I'm more. You got sixteen oh two as well, folks. Hmm. What does that mean? For me. Well, I think it means that this is pulling down, but that doesn't make physics sense to me. Let me think here for a second. I mean, it's possible you could have tension so tight that this would be pulling down, but that would be if you were like pulling that way really, 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 really hard. If you're pulling this way, I think it would want to rotate still. Um, have I done something silly here?
mass of the beam. I stole this from a provincial, so the numbers should be good. Sorry? Well, it's, it's, Gordon, what was that? You're saying maybe this is so heavy on this end that the rope pulling up is, it's so heavy over here that it wants to spin this way. And so this is having to push down. And that's brilliant if I can convince myself that that's right. Have I made a mistake somewhere? You got, did you get 1602 as well? <coughs> Why do I have, sorry? Uh, because we want to find the force on the hinge, which is going to be that plus that. Oh, ha. Yan, who reads English better than me, bless your heart. She says, all they want is the horizontal force, not the vertical force, not the combined force. I should have read the question carefully. I thought FH, I read it really quick, stood for F hinge, but they want the horizontal force, don't they? So do I need to find FY? No, Gordon actually a long time ago already told us, Mr. Duick, I know what the horizontal force is. What's the horizontal force? How big is FX? You told me what it was the same size as quite a while ago. Uh, not perpendicular, parallel. What I need to do is say this. Ah, and I bet you they didn't care about the rest of the numbers, which is why we were getting a bizarre torque going down. Fair enough. Fx equals tension uh, parallel. You got me doing it now. I don't know tension parallel. I know perpendicular. Okay, so that's 48 degrees up there. See the Z. How are these two related? Salvage this, Mr. Duick. Sheesh. Tan? Yes. Tan of 48 equals perpendicular over parallel. So that means that tension parallel is going to be perpendicular divided by tan 48. Mr. Duick? Read the question properly. The horizontal component, Fx or Fh for horizontal, is going to be this divided by that. It's going to be 1602.3 divided by tan. You know what? I'll leave this lesson online just as a humility exercise so my kids know that I still make mistakes. Of course, that means people from other schools and across the province are watching. Ah! I make mistakes, get over it. Uh, 1442? 1443? Oh, sig figs. 1.44 times 10 to the... Thank you, Yan. Third, Newtons. Okay. And you know what? Then I'll revise this from an A-plus question to an A-minus question. I would consider this. This I would consider fair game. Two more, we're done. <laughs> Two more? Oh, three more, we're done. This, this here is about as difficult as the torques can get because we have the beam not horizontal. We have the tension <laughs> at a different angle from the beam. Okay? In fact, I gave you one. This is similar to what we did on the quiz on the last question, except there I had the beam coming down from the ceiling, but it was the same idea. The rope and the beam were all at different angles. So, do you guys want to try this one on your own, or do you want me to do this? Tyler shook his head. Do you want to try this on your own, or do you want me to do this? Do we do it together? Okay. Let's walk through it. This is fair game. One of these. Six of these? No. One of these. A six meter uniform beam of mass 25 kilograms is suspended by a cable as shown. 85 kilogram object hangs on one end. What's the tension in the cable? Okay. Forces acting on the beam. The mass of the beam times G. The mass of the load times G. Tension. 
Oh, and there's probably a vertical and a horizontal, but who cares? Because there's zero from the pivot. Remember I said sometimes they give you a different angle? Most of the time they've given us the bottom angle. This time they gave us the top one. Okay. Let's first of all draw in our components. There's the mass of the beam G perpendicular. Parallel. There's the mass of the load G perpendicular. Parallel. There's tension perpendicular. Parallel. And you'll notice, because I'm not using the parallel, I didn't even bother labeling them because it's less to think about. Okay, the top triangle here isn't too bad. I'm going to extend it, though, so I don't run into stuff. The top triangle here isn't too bad because as I look at this, this angle here is 67 degrees. I see a Z. Okay. Oh. Ready? Let me make this nice and big. Make this nice and big, I thought I said. See the Z? See it? So, how big? 75. What do these two add together to? Now, you could either go... There's a Z here, which means this is 75, and then say there's another Z here, which means that's 75, which is going to give us a different angle for a change. Okay? Or you could say that's 75. If you wanted to have the angle at the top, so you could use cosine again, then this would be, be what? 15. Which one you want to do? I don't care. That's 75. So that means that's 75 down there, and that's 75 down there. And that didn't turn off. Try that again. That's 75 down there, and that's 75 down there. Two Zs. Oh, nice twist. Is that okay? You guys follow how I, how we got that? Right? If you're really not sure, extend lines at horizontals and verticals and level with the beams, and eventually you'll be able to hopscotch your way there. I have the advantage because I can turn that eraser thing on and off so I can mark up the diagram and have everything vanish. Um, if you're really not sure, redraw part of the diagram off in the margin somewhere and mark that one up like crazy until you find the angle, and then transfer it back to your nicer di diagram. Uh, what's the... T oh, tension. Uh, torques, Mr. Duick. Torques, we say. The sum of all the torques clockwise, that's in that direction, equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise, that's in that direction. Which force or forces could cause it to spin clockwise? I think the masses, so we have mass of the beam G perpendicular times its distance from the pivot plus mass of the load G perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Uh, 3 and 6, right? Center of mass and right at the end. And that equals clock counterclockwise, tension perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Uh, six, Mr. Duick? No. How far is tension from the pivot? Four. Trig. I'll use this triangle because it's bigger. This one's small and yucky, but this one's nice and big. And they're identical triangles, so whatever trig function I do here is going to be the same one here. Which trig function am I going to use here? Yeah, this time it's sine. <coughs> so for both of these, it's going to be mass of the beam G 
sine 75 times 3 plus mass of the load G sine 75 times 6 equals, and I'll do the trig for perpendicular at the very, very end because that's too much trig, but I am just going to divide by 4 on this line and get the perpendicular by itself because it's my last step. I got room? Good. <coughs> Tension perpendicular is going to end up being, what was the mass of the beam? 25 and 85. 25 times 9.8 sine 75 times 3 plus 85 times 9.8 sine 75 times, it was 6, right? All divided by 4. Justin, once again, I'll type in the entire top line probably and just press enter and then divide by 4. <coughs> Twenty-five times nine point eight times sine seventy-five close bracket times three plus eighty-five times nine point eight times sine seventy-five close bracket times six. I'll well, divide it by four. You get thirteen eighty-four point four one three blah blah blah. Okay. So tension perpendicular is thirteen eighty-four. Newtons and I have room over here and I'm running out of room at the bottom so I'll move over uh, I want to find tension in this triangle how are perpendicular and tension related which trig function you also sign okay uh, sign of what I totally forget 67 sign of 67 equals perpendicular over tension Tension equals perpendicular divided by sine of 67. Final answer, and I conveniently have perpendicular on my calculator, so I'll just divide that by sine of 67. 1,500. 1,500 newtons. Yay. Okay. <coughs> Two more, we're done. <coughs> A 0.75 kilogram board of length 2.6 meters initially rests on two supports as shown. So it's just sitting there. It's not nailed down. <coughs> what maximum distance X from the right-hand support can a 1.2 kilogram bird walk before the board begins to leave the left-hand support? In other words, how far to the right can that bird walk before the whole thing flips over? Oh little twist because here we're being asked to find the distance. Definitely a beam, yes. Definitely torques, yes. How are we going to start out? How have we started out almost every torque question? Label the forces, okay. <coughs> and uh, uh, Ty, I'm going to be very careful with my distances because are my pivots on the end? Ah, okay. Definitely going to notice that. What are the forces acting here? Get the obvious ones. Okay. And that looks about center of ma well, you know, close. I don't care. Probably really over here, but anyways, mass of the beam times G. What else, Ty? Bird? Ooh, I got B for beam and B for bird. I'll call it M1 G. Pretty heavy bird. 1.2 kilos? That's a, that's a big bird. Uh, can this be in equilibrium right now? No, because all my forces are down. There's got to be some upwards forces. Where? Well, I think right there we would have, I'll call that FR for F right. Now, How big is this force if we're just starting to tip? Zero. There, 
if he's further this way, I'm sure it's pushing up, taking some of the mass of the plank. But if it's just starting to tip, if we're just starting to begin to tip, what we're really saying here, Justin, is the force on this has just become zero, and now it's ready to pivot around there. So I'm going to make a little note here. The force is zero because we're just starting to tip. Does that make sense? That, that's the extra little bit of reasoning we have to do here, Dylan. <coughs> All right. Torques. Um, where am I going to put my pivot? I think I'm going to put my pivot right here because I don't know this force. <coughs> The sum of all the torques clockwise equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise. <coughs> clockwise. So if that's my pivot, what could cause it to spin clockwise? Ah. Uh, don't use red, Mr. Duick. Let's go black. M1G times, how far is it from the pivot? Oh, that's what we're trying to find. There's my X. Equals, what could cause it to spin counterclockwise? Mass of the beam times G times, okay, I'm going to have to do some math here. How far is it from the pivot? How long is the beam grand total? 2.6, and that is that far, right? Center of mass is this distance here, 1.3. Hmm, how's that help? Well, let's see. What's this total distance here? What's the total distance here? Tyler? 1.8. And how far do I want to be from the end? 1.3. So how far am I from here? Ah, see, it's going to be 1.8 minus 1.3. Like I said to you, I will not give you all of the information directly in a diagram. You're going to have to do some of that. Remember that grade 8 and 9 measurement stuff where you were doing perimeter? And the, you're going to have to do some of that same skill for some of your diagrams. And if you're not sure, do what I did. Add that extra line because it makes it way easier to spot stuff. So I said, okay, whole thing, center of mass right there. Uh, oh, 1.8, 1.3, so 0.5. Oh, this is actually an easy question to solve. Five marks? Well, the key is realizing that because you're about to tip, this is going to be zero. I saw this question, a similar one like this a few years ago. A lot of kids wanted to put a force right here because they were uh, uh, up. They wanted one more torque. So we're going to have this, x equals the mass of the beam times g times 0.5 divided by m1g. As it turns out, unusually, what cancels? Not the masses, because they're different masses. What cancels? Yeah, what we're saying is uh, this would work on the moon as well. It's the same distance on the moon as on the Earth or the same distance on Mars as on the Earth, or Jupiter as on the Earth. We get, hopefully I get a positive answer, uh, 0.75 times, let's see here, 0.75 times 0.5 divided by 1.2, so 0.312 or 0.31. 0.31 meters. Does that make sense? That's reasonable? Certainly the answer can't be bigger than 2.6 because that's the length of the beam. So yeah, I, I, it seems good. 
B. What force does the right hand support exert on the board at that instant? Hmm. Oh. What force is right here? How many marks is this worth? I think F up equals F down. I think it's got to be because for two marks, Jordan, I don't think they want me to pull out torques or move a pivot. or I, For two marks, I think those are usually kind of plug and chug. Uh, mass of the beam, 0 .7, 0 0.75 times 9.8 plus 1.2 times 9.8. 19.1 newtons. Would the force be changing? Yeah, as the bird moves, it's changing the torques. The force on each of these beams will be changing. In fact, as the bird moves left, the force here would be going up because as it moves right, it hits zero. And then you can even almost think about when it starts to tip. The force here is sort of negative. It's pushing it up and away because it's going to spin. So, yeah. Number six, very similar to number five in that it looks like they're asking me to find a distance. By the way, see the font has changed? That tells you this was from the 80s before they had computers printing these up when they actually used to use physical type printing press machines. It says, consider the bar AB to have negligible mass. Oh, there, there's our magic bar with no mass. How far from point A must a downward force to, of 40.5 newtons be applied in order to achieve rotational equilibrium? Hmm. Good question. Uh, which side has more mass on it? Which side has more torque on it? Well, the nice thing is, because we're horizontal, I can really quickly figure this out. This side, I'm assuming that's my pivot, has that times that torque 5 times 2.1, 10.5. This side has 3.5 times 4.3. Which side has more torque? Which side needs help then? Okay, you know what I just figured out by doing that? The force is somewhere here. Except, can I draw it like this instead? Because this is how we're used to seeing it. Mystery force F, that's the distance. A needs some help. It could be further over, I don't know. But I know it's to the left of the pivot. That was my first thing I wanted to figure out. By the way, if I guessed wrong, if I'd put it to the right of the pivot, I would know because when I tried to crunch the numbers, I'd get a negative distance, and that would say, you've goofed. Start over. Other side. Now, I think, though, this is almost similar, maybe even a little bit easier, to the previous question. We're going to find the distance. Oh, what are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. I'll call it M-A-G, M-B-G. And wonderfully enough, are these all perpendicular? No components? It's almost straight plug and chug. Uh, let's start out the sum of all the torques clockwise in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in that direction. Clockwise, clockwise, oh. 3.5 times 9.8 times 4.3, right? Mg times its distance from the pivot equals counterclockwise, counterclockwise. By the way, I skipped a step. Normally, I wrote the variables, but I can tell you guys are, it's tired. you're tired. It's been a long class, so I stuck the numbers in right away as well. Is that okay? Counterclockwise, I would never do this on a test. I'd always show the extra work because you don't want to do a sloppy mistake. Uh, counterclockwise, MA5 uh, times 9.8 times its distance from the pivot plus 40.5. Was that kilograms or newtons? So do I need to multiply it by 9.8? Nope. 
40.5 times x. And I think I said to you at the very beginning of this unit, one of the things I like about this unit, the setup is tough, but the equations you get at the end are usually pretty easy to solve. I mean, the most we've been doing is dividing by a number or two or subtracting something over, but nothing really, really high tech. It's going to be this minus that answer divided by 40.5. Three point five times nine point eight times four point three minus five times nine point eight times two point one divided by forty point five. One point one? By the way, what could not my answer be bigger than? Two point one. So this built in error checks as well. One point one seems pretty good almost worked out bang even that makes me think oh I bet you that's where they put it to start out to do the math so I think I'm right uh, the last thing I think I, I'm again my brain works weird when I calculated very quickly the torque here and the torque here I think I went mass times distance I don't think I included the 9.8 I don't think I included the 9.8 not that it made a difference in terms of figuring out which one was bigger but I should have yeah. Oh, how far from point A? Ah, someone else can read better than me. So if X is 1.1, how far from point A? Therefore, 1.0 meters from point A. Apparently, I didn't drink coffee this morning. But I, I hope that kind of helped to crystallize the details, kind of locked in what we're going. OK, and there's your test. You can think about what kind of using principles of physics right to explain questions there might be. There are some good suggestions or some good hints in your big review package. Some of the ones that are there, easy to tweak and give you as well. I'm going to hit stop. The rest of the class is yours to work on the review.